the interlock functionality is very important for the operator to be able to find out why uh, an object is being interlocked and what the reason for that is. So what we did in PCS7, we built in a, a capability that uh, any interlock that the en is being engineered is automatically visible for the operator. And a perfect example is in my reactor here, where in the bottom I have a pump and the pump allows the reactor to be evacuated. It has its own faceplate, its own pop-up window with all its details, but in this case what we're interested in is the detail about the interlock. So the interlock is currently being locked, indicated by that little lock-shaped symbol. And if I want to interrogate why are you being, am I being interlocked, then I can click on the button and the system automatically opens a pop-up window that tells me the condition that causes this interlock to be true. Of course, it tells me now in text that that valve is closed and uh, it would be nice if I now can navigate directly to the reason why the valve is closed. And of course, that is being offered as well. This arrow here allows me to navigate upstream the logical equation and find the valve's condition. See, it's a manual. If I would now open the valve, then that would mean that my interlock condition is being overruled by the condition being good. And that is then immediately being shown as a uh, green rectangle here, that that condition is met. And then further down, of course, on my pump, the lock will open. So this is a perfect example of how a pump can be interlocked by a device. And with a few mouse clicks, I can find out which device, what is the condition it needs to be in. I can then evaluate, can I change the condition of this device? And if I decide to do so because it's safe, then that will release the interlock. Now, more interesting here is that this functionality for the operator comes out of the box automatically as soon as the engineer has implemented the interlock. Because these three objects, the valve, the motor, and their interlock, are of course built in the engineering system. So within the context of the engineering system, I have my reactor and I have my transfer out, and within the transfer out I find objects for the respective valve and pump. And if I now go to my pump, which is the subject to the interlock, then I can see that that pump, its interlock condition is driven by this connection here to this interlock object, which is technically speaking nothing else but a logical equation, an OR or an AND or a combination of such. Laying down this object and connecting it with the valve has been the only thing the engineer had to do to make the interlock work and be presented to the operator in a comprehensive way. So with natural actions of programming or setting up the system, we create an environment in which the interlock is safely executed by the controller, presented to the operator and provide different means to interrogate its status or interact with it.